We hope this video is helpful in helping us assist you in keeping Washington safe. Two-factor authentication adds another layer to secure your information. Two-factor authentication helps protect your secure access Washington account. Two-factor authentications are generally referred to as multi-factor authentication or MFA. In short, we are simply using two factors to keep your account safe. By signing into your secure access account and then verifying access by email or phone ensures that only authorized individuals have access to your information. Every time you log into your Secure Access Washington account, uh, you will have to verify that account unless you add a device to your account. You sign in with two pieces of information, your password, something you know, and a verification code and a username. To start off, we are going to go ahead and sign in to your Secure Access Washington sometimes referred to a SAW account. You'll notice we have your username and you'll have your password. Now let's go ahead and sign in. By selecting Secure Access Washington, you will be able to update, manage, and verify your information at Secure Access Washington. We'll go ahead and click that link. By selecting the Secure Access Washington account, you will arrive at the home page to update, verify, and confirm your information. Here we will go ahead and we will go ahead and click on account. Now you have the option to change different languages. Um, this first is set in Spanish. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click on account. Click on the account tab. Here is your profile information for your Secure Access Washington account. Uh, you'll see we have your first and last name, email address on file. You can also add an additional email address to your account. Let's go ahead and we're going to add an additional email address. And we'll have the option, uh, if you wish, to verify your information by phone. Once we've entered that information, uh, we're going to go ahead and click on Update Your Account. Anytime we add or update information, we'll have the option to choose that multi-factor authentication or MFA, but what it is is just your two-factor authentication. We'll go ahead and click on the method is for email for us to verify that information and add that second layer of protection. Once we have um, done the initial two-factor authentication, uh, we'll go back to our eServices account. That is going to be also your benefits claimant eServices portal provided by Employment Security Department. So we'll go and click the Access Now. This is letting us know we are at. Now we are accessing Employment Security Department. Let's go, and we're going to go ahead and select the Continue. Okay. Now we are going to arrive at the landing page. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and click on Apply for Unemployment Benefits or Manage Your Current and existing past claims. We're going to click on this. Click on that first link. Hey, once again, uh, because we are verifying our information and we're doing it for the first time, it's going to ask us to verify now uh, that we do have access to update or see the information on eServices. We're going to click on that email again one more time. Once again, we are going to get an email with a confirmation code. That confirmation code would be four digits, and then it'll be followed by six additional digits. Once that code comes in, we are going to put in 
that confirmation code into the uh, space provided. We have received that, so let's go and put that code in that space provided. And we're going to go ahead and hit submit. We will give the option to remember device. Now, if we do not remember device, it's going to ask us for that MFA, MFA code or two-factor authentication code every time. So what we want to do is we want to add a device. Let's go ahead and click on Yes, Remember My Device. And let's go ahead and name that. Uh, go ahead and name that device. Let's go with Maverick. Type in Maverick, and let's go ahead and hit that Submit button. Hitting that Submit button does allow us to remember that device, and so it does not ask us for that two-factor authentication every time. We can always add a new device if we'd like to, and that will remember that device. We also get an alert. Here, once we sign back in, this will let us know that there are some items that may need our attention. And if we want to read our alerts, we can do that. We're going to go ahead and skip that. Let's go and press no. And once again here, uh, you will see that we do have an alert. Uh, that alert is letting us know that um, we have some important information in regards to the work search that will be going back to effect uh, the week of July 4th. Yep. And once we're here, we can also go ahead and we can update some of our contact information. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and click on our settings tab right up here. Settings tab will allow us to update some important information on our account. Okay. For this video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on the update contact information. Okay, you'll see the little person on the side, and it'll say update contact information. Let's go and click on that. Here we have the opportunity to add some information and update some information. And for this purpose, we're going to go ahead and we're going to update our street address for that or at least verify that information. Okay, and we'll put that seat address in there. We want to make sure that information is correct. One thing to keep in mind is anytime we are confirming information, we come to the screen, it is going to ask us to confirm. Please confirm this address. So what we're going to do is we want to confirm this address using the U.S. Post Office addresses on file. Click on please confirm this address and we will get a pop-up on here. Um, the screen that does say yes we want to verify that this is your address. Okay and it has verified what it's done is verified against the addresses in the database for the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, in an instance where you are changing your address, um, you, will, you will be shown, when you update that address, you may have the option to select the post office recognized address. In that event, you always want to use that post office recognized address. Go and click Save. At this point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to verify that information. Uh, we can change the contact information. If we want to change our language, we can change our language on that first block. Well, we can change how we get that correspondence. We can change it by send by US mail, or we can go to e-services only. For this instance, we're going to keep it uh, US mail. And we're also going to keep phone only. <clears throat> we don't want to update any other information. Everything is fine. So we're going to go back down to the bottom, and we're going to go ahead and submit that information. Once we hit Submit, we will be provided a confirmation page. 
on this confirmation page, we have about three options. So if we click on Home, that is going to take us back to our home page. And we can always click Home from here. So let's go ahead and click that home page. And that takes us back to our regular um, home page. So there's some additional information about our account. At this point, we are done. Uh, we have successfully updated MFA in Secure Access Washington, and we've also verified our two-factor authentication in e services, and we've also added a device. So we're going to go ahead and sign out. If we did have any unsaved data, it would be lost. However, we have saved everything, so we are good to go. Uh, we're going to go and click Yes. Okay. And we have a right back to our sign-in page. We have successfully updated information and um, added that two-factor authentication to our Secure Access Washington account. We hope this video is helpful in helping us assist you in keeping Washington safe.